kind of annoyed today because I have to teach this stupid exercise. This exercise that I avoided for several years until a friend convinced me to add it to my practice routine. And lo and behold, annoyingly, it's amazing. It's incredible at unlocking our musical minds. So here we go. Today, we're teaching scale running. Stupid, simple, robotic scale running. And if this is your first time trying it, get ready to have your mind blown or get ready to be annoyed uh, out of your chair because either one could happen. The basics of scale running are actually pretty simple. There's only a couple of rules. First, don't break the chain ever. Keep those eighth notes going. Don't stop them. Second, change the scale with the chord. You want to have your color palette of notes change with the chord changes. That's really what this is all about. You want that unbroken. Third, you're going to want to go slow. Slower than you think. Slower than usual. Take your time with this and gradually nudge up the speed. What we're doing here is really mapping out our musical mind for these tunes. We can pick a tune, pick a set of chord changes, scale run, and it kind of grooves in what some color palette options are. And our hands never stop. It's really amazing. But if you go too fast, you're not really going to get the, the effects out of it, right? You're going to be kind of skipping over the good part, which is running those grooves in our brain of our note options and discovering a lot of stuff along the way. The very first thing we're going to work on here is a bit of pre-written scale running. Usually you're going to be improvising this, but if this is your first time trying it, I wanted to give you a written out example so that you can see what we're doing here and how this might work. Again, we're starting very, very slowly. So keep that in mind. These are the first eight bars of There Will Never Be Another You. And I'm not doing anything crazy here. Just that major Ionian scale for the E flat major, the Locrian for the D minor seven flat five, which is just diatonic, just the E flat scale starting on the seventh degree. The Phrygian dominant, which is kind of a cool choice if you don't know, that's the uh, fifth mode of the C harmonic minor, right? So C harmonic minor scale starting on G. Really, really cool to know that. Uh, and then the Aeolian for the C minor seven. A lot of you might play Dorian, but remember we're in the key of E flat here. A flat's a bound if we're going to keep it nice and diatonic. For the B flat minor seven, we'll do the B flat Dorian. For the E flat seven, Mixolydian. Again, nothing crazy for the first time through, but you can see how once you start linking it up, how even keeping it pretty tight and diatonic, as diatonic as possible, uh, can be a challenge as we're linking them, this up. So let me play what this is going to sound like, and then I'll ask you to try it. I've got my metronome here set at 76 beats per minute. I'm just going to play a root. I'm not even going to play a bass line, just a root in my left hand so you can hear the scale running against the root note of the changes. And if you check it out here, I'm going in scale-wise steps, changing the scale as the chord changes. So the first two bars, just straight up the major scale. When we get to that D minor 7... That's that Locrian, which is still the E flat major scale, so nothing changes. And then that Phrygian dominant has a B natural, and we're right there. Then I'm going to go a little bit of a surround here as we go back down on C minor. I want to hit a strong chord tone. So I'm going to skip a note from D to F and then back down the E flat, the Aeolian scale for two bars. And then that leads perfectly to the B flat minor seven, that Dorian with that D flat in the Dorian scale for B flat minor seven. Let's hear how this sounds with the metronome. I'll play it first as an example, and then I'll ask you to play it. So here's my version. Two, three, and. Slower than you think. And we'll end on the A flat major there, which is just beautiful. But so here we're linking up. There's no breaking of the chain. We're switching the scale choices when we switch 
uh, the, the chords. And I'm not gonna get too into what scale to use. Really, the notes don't matter. <laughs> we say that a lot around here, but you can pick whatever, as we'll see later. Uh, we're gonna go through five different examples. We're gonna take it outside. We're gonna use substitutions. It doesn't really matter what you choose. It matters that you choose something and then you switch to it when the, when the change happens. That's the real challenge and not breaking that rhythmic chain, keeping it steady. You try it. Here we go. One, two, three, and. So there it is. That's the basic premise of this dumb little exercise is just unbroken chains, changing the scale when the chord changes. Again, it helps to map out everything in our heads and it helps to put our hands in the right position when we want to be. So that is a pre-written version. Ideally, we're going to be improvising this, which is what we're doing next. Okay, so I have five different ways that we can play this exercise. The first is the most basic. It's linear, and we're gonna keep it slow. I'm gonna do eighth notes, which is still relatively slow. There are no rules about where you can change directions. You can change directions whenever you want. If you just wanna stay here, you can. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. Like you can go all the way up and down if you want. And in fact, it's fun to play around with, you know, these sort of geographical differences, you can call them. But the only rule right now is that we want to keep it linear. We want to see if we can avoid using thirds. Now, I used a third in that first example. And, you know, you might have to or a chromatic movement to just line up a nice juicy note uh, on the downbeat or on a strong beat. It doesn't really matter, too. You could also just do the juicy notes on the offbeats. That's fine, too. Really, the key is switching your melodic palette when the harmonic change happens, right? So I'll give you an example of what this would sound like. I'm going to keep it nice and slow, keep everything linear as a linear scale, and I'll change directions at will, pretty much, and see if I can keep with these scales that we have here. So here's my example for you. One, two, three, and... That worked out quite nicely. So I started wherever I wanted to start. I changed directions wherever I wanted to change. I had some long stretches, I had some short stretches, but the key was I tried to keep it within a scale tone the whole time and I didn't stop that chain. I kept that chain of eighth notes going, outlining our, our melodic choices here. You give it a shot, I'll play the roots. You just worry about the melodic stuff. One, two, three. Isn't that fun? So much fun. So this can be, like I said, the key to unlocking that harmonic map in your mind. It's great for learning a tune. It's great for practicing changes. It's great for doing more advanced stuff as we'll see here as we progress. Let's check out the second version of this. Number two, thirds allowed. So we can now do thirds. That's really all this is, is uh, instead of just plain linear scales within a whole step or a half step, we can now do thirds, which means too that, you know, triads are fair game, broken seventh chords are fair game, arpeggios for the most part are fair game. So let's try it here. I'll give you my example again of what that might sound like. You don't have to go straight thirds up and down. You can if you want to, but just know now thirds are an option. We can still do linear. We can still do chromatic even. We can now do more thirds, more broken sevenths, more triads. Let's try it. One, two, three, and...
so much fun. You could really have fun improvising uh, with this concept. Your turn. I'll play the roots again. Try it. One, two, three, and. You know what I mean? Things are starting to open up now. This is why it's so annoyingly good. Ah, stupid exercise. It's worked so well. All right, let's move on to number three. For number three, we're still keeping our basic harmonic palette here. Just the major Locrian, all that stuff. The, the really diatonic way that you can approach these. But now we're going to use all intervals. In my own practice, I've been working on just finding new shapes. They could be big shapes across an octave even, across a ninth. They could be fourths. Whatever you want to do, they could be triad arpeggios. However, you want to use uh, the harmonic palette that we have to we have available to us, you can just keep it within these color palettes, right? So keep it with major. Everything on the E flat has to be part of the E flat major. Everything on the D minor seven flat five has to be part of that low green. Even if you do big old, this can be a really cool way to explore. And again, keep the chain going. Switch when the chord switches. I'll give you an example here. One, two, three, and. You try it. Whatever interval you want to play is fair game. Again, just keep the chain unbroken. Here we go. One, two, three, and. Pretty good, eh? Starting to come together, no? This is how it gets you. This is how this exercise gets you. Let's do number four. Okay, so not only is scale running an annoyingly great way to learn uh, new forms and chord changes and our melodic and harmonic options over chord changes, it's also a great way to practice new theory you might be working on, right? New changes. So here, I've got a bunch of substitutions here. Pretty much everything is different except for that B flat minor seven. Still just gonna stay Dorian here for a while. But our E flat, we can use a Lydian. You know what I mean? Use that sharp four sound, uh, the sharp 11 sound. Uh, for the D minor seven flat five, the Locrian sharp two, it's the same scale just with a, a natural two, with an E natural. That's an F melodic minor mode. Um, for the five chord here, I'm going to sub instead of G7, I'm going to do a B minor seven as a little chromatic sliding up to our C minor seven, right? So it's just a B minor Dorian. It's just a way for me to practice getting this substitution in my chain. It's a, it's a substitution I know that I want to be able to have seamlessly. This is a perfect way to practice it. Uh, for the C minor seven, I'm just going to use a melodic minor, a true melodic minor. Ascending and descending is different. Uh, the classical melodic minor. That's also a scale that I've been working on, trying to get more comfortable in my improvisation in all keys, because um, it's not how I learned it. But I, I've since learned that a lot of people like Herbie Hancock actually play the classical melodic minor, Keith Jarrett too, like different up and down. And it makes a lot of sense for me now. So I want that in my playing. Scale running, annoyingly, is the way to do that. Uh, for the B flat minor seven, just the Dorian. And then a tritone sub. Instead of E flat seven, we're gonna do A seven. We're gonna do a little A seven sus, a little mixolydian. I'm gonna keep it to eighth notes, unbroken here, and see if I can keep it slow. And let's try it. One, two, three, and. 
any interval counts still. That's fun. This is where it gets really, really interesting and really, really fun. Why don't you try it? I'll play the roots for you. See if you can add in my substitutions. You could do this with whatever substitutions you want to do. You want to do all tritone subs. You want to do whatever, all chromatic uh, approaches. You can do all of that. You can practice this by kind of predetermining what you want to do. But for now, let's keep with these uh, as a practice method. Try it here. Eighth notes. One, two, three, and... How much fun is that? Okay, we're starting now to really utilize this in a pretty advanced way. Let's unlock everything here and do number five. So number five, we're actually gonna break the chain. We're gonna break the rules. Rules are meant to be broken, folks. And so we're gonna keep our advanced harmonic palette here, but uh, we can now have a break in our eighth notes and we can use other rhythms. This is where you might find your mind being blown a little bit as you've built this up. Right. This is in my own experience of practicing this super uh, stupid exercise. This is where I was like, oh, yeah, this is really good, isn't it? Because um, listen to what can happen here. Anything is fair game. I'm going to use the same concept, but just start breaking it up and doing some rhythmic things. You know, now we add our soul to it. Really, we're adding the rhythm inside us of the universe and all that very fun stuff. Let's try it. One, two, three. Try it. Here we go. One, two, three. There it is, folks. That is frustratingly good to do. <laughs> it's so fun in the end of it, even though uh, it's it doesn't feel like it's going to be fun. But when you get there, like all good things, you know, it starts simple, starts a little silly, a little stupid, and it ends up being very, very helpful and honest and human and, and beautiful and soulful. So thank you very much for this practice. Again, join us over at Open Studio Pro. There's a great deal here in the description if you want to join the fun every single day. Come with us. Until next time, happy practicing.